your hands. Oh, is somebody ready to testify of His goodness? Oh, yes. I testify every day of my life. Oh, yes. I testify of your goodness. of your greatness, oh God. Oh Lord, your grace, oh God, is sufficient in my life. Oh, faithful God, you are righteous, Father. I testify, I testify of your goodness in my life. Do you testify?
so true flows freely from above to humanity me and you in every act of grace and mercy shown your love is widely known So divine and so true, who's really from above to humanity, me and you, in every act of grace and mercy, showing his love is why we don't. He was his earth line, God is so true.
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It's Rhapsody time. Pastor is talking to us this morning. He says, we heal from deity. Our theme scripture is taken from 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. It says, Ye of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. There's a misconception of the meaning of the phrase, ye are of God. In the verse above, to some it means to be on God's side, but that's not correct. The Apostle John's construction isn't in any way ambiguous. So it isn't about being on anyone's side. It simply means you hail from deity. In other words, your origin is in God. You are his offspring. Hallelujah. It's akin to what the Bible says in James 1.18. It says, of his own will begat he us with the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. To hail from God, therefore, Christ must be in you. You must receive him to live in you. Recall the words of the Lord Jesus in John 3.3. 3. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. The concluding phrase, of our opening verse gives credence to this. It says, greater is he that's in you. So he has to be in you. Think about it. He gave birth to you to live in you. The Bible says, Christ in you, the hope of glory, according to Colossians 1.27. You have absolute victory over all forces of darkness and the wicked spirits that orchestrate evil because of the greater one that lives in you. Read out beautifully the, a, the Amplified Classic renders our opening verse. Little children, ye are of God, you belong to him, and have already defeated and overcome them, the agents of Antichrist, because he who lives in you is greater, mightier than he who is in the world. Praise God. You have overcome the adversary and his nefarious and sinister plans to cause untold hardship, troubles, sorrows, distresses, and corrupting influences in the world because you hail from deity. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's take the confession together. You can take it after me. I have overcome all the forces of darkness and wicked spirits that orchestrate evil plans in the world because I hail from God and the greater one lives in me. I have overcome the sorrows distresses and corrupting influences in the world and victorious always in Christ Jesus. Amen. Glory! Happy Easter, God's victorious people! How many know that we danced on an empty grave? How many know we danced on an empty grave? If they look in the tomb, they won't find us in our shame. They won't find us in our sin. They won't find us in deadly disease. Hallelujah! Other stones are rolled away Cause you triumphed the grave So we celebrate your eternal victory 
Come on, lift it up. So shout of Zion. Cause you have overcome 
the keys of your eyes just somebody it's a day of rejoicing there is a reason that the grave is empty amen and there's no savior there's no God there's no name that the worship where they have proof that their grave is empty they all died and were buried and they remain buried but there is only one Lord, only one God, only one resurrected King, and that's Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. They can explain and explain. No evidence. But we have evidence. He not only risen, but he lives in me. Glory to God. And so there has been a multiplication of Jesus everywhere, in every nation, in every language, in every tribe, over the years. Jesus everywhere. Hallelujah. Please be seated. I'll just do a few minutes before today is Easter Sunday. So the focus is on Easter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So how are you doing? How are you coping with the Abuja heat? Did it get to your side? Or oh, it's only in my house? <laughs> I think it's about time we pray for rain. The rains need to come. Hallelujah. Okay, so last Sunday we started talking about remote jobs. You know, moving beyond what you see, what is around you. And one of the beautiful things about... Um, working remotely or virtually, they practically mean the same thing, is that you don't need to know anybody. We live in a society that if you are not connected to someone, somewhere, you may not get what you deserve. But here, that barrier is completely removed. It's all about competence. It's all about the skill that you have. So anybody can become anything on these platforms. Praise the Lord. You know, and then after talking about it last week, I had a few uh, persons reach out to me. Oh, do you have links that you can share with us and all of that? So today, I want to talk about how you can research and hone for these opportunities by yourself. The, 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 the field is so vast that there's no one person that can give you the links that will help you get what you want. But how do I find out what I can do, what is available, praise the Lord. Then, before I go into that, I want to also talk about um, when you start. You know, when you share things like this, it sometimes removes the process. Because I'm communicating something that can take you six months, three months, two weeks, in five minutes. So it looks like a microwave solution. Just get it in and get it out. You know, but there is nothing that is worthwhile that does not take time. That does not follow a process. Not even what I am teaching you. You know, so you don't go online and just do your research for a few days, a few weeks, you know, a few hours, and then give up and say it didn't work. Remember that you spent over 14 years to go through school to get a piece of paper. That didn't put money in your accounts. Are you getting that? It's a paper with no guarantee. True? The moment they give you, you're on your own. But you could, you were patient enough to put in six years in kindergarten. Put uh, six years in kindergarten to primary school, another six years in secondary school, then maybe a four to six years in the university. Why are you not patient enough to put three weeks into what will move you forward? 
to put three months, to put six months, to put one year. You are attending a university or you attended a university where you were paying maybe 400,000 per term because that's what most of them pay now, even more in private universities. Then somebody says, okay, I can help onboard you in the virtual space. You need to pay 25,000 and an alarm just goes off in your head. They want to take my money. What of the school that took your money and gave you a piece of paper? Is there a greater fraud than that? Well, it's not a fraud, but do you understand what I mean? So sometimes you need to realign your thinking and place value on what will move you forward. Glory to God. So one of the first things you need to do is pin down keywords that you will use on search engines. What am I interested in? The word virtual, the word remote, maybe legal, maybe customer service, maybe accounting, maybe, do you understand? Write down the keywords with which you are going on this mission. So maybe I put into a search engine, I can even go like remote jobs available to Nigerians because not all are available to Nigerians. Some will not do anything with you because you are in Nigeria. But there are so many others who don't care. Then I can go um, available remote jobs for a legal practitioner. You'll be surprised at what you see. Remote job opportunities for teachers. Remote job opportunities for customer service. So pick your keywords and then keep searching. When links come up, go through two, go through three. If you don't get what you want, go back. Change your keywords and then search for something else. It is a research. That's why it's called a research. You need to sit down and focus and do it. Praise the Lord. So that's number one. Then number two, view contents that relate to what you are after. Pastor told us about the red car principle some weeks ago. How many of you remember? Whatever you're thinking about, you begin to notice, you begin to see. So when you start focusing on this, you will be shocked at how much information comes on your timeline that has to do with virtual jobs that you've never paid attention to because you were not interested. It was not what you were looking for. But now, when you see anything that has to do with virtual jobs, remote job opportunities, what you need to do is click on it, maybe watch the video, maybe read the write-up, whatever it is. Sometimes one um, resource leads to another and another. But what's going to happen to your feed? Because you spent maybe five minutes, two minutes, 10 minutes on this information on your feed, the algorithm of the platform now says that, oh, Amaka likes information about remote jobs. The next thing you're going to see is you're going to start seeing more videos, more write-ups, more posts, more information on remote jobs coming up on your feed. It's just like when uh, you research um, healthy living or smoothies or recipes for um, homemade juices and all of that. Before long, they start showing you blender, they start showing you carrot juice, this juice, that juice, because you have shown them that you are interested in this. So this is another way to search for um, opportunities. You can do it on X, which is Twitter. You can do it on LinkedIn. You can do it on Facebook. You can do it on Instagram. Are you getting that? So start digesting uh, or rather consuming information in this direction and more information will come out. Then you will begin to see those who want to sell to you. Those who are saying, pay and join my group. Those who are saying, we have free classes. Praise the Lord. Then another place to check is Udemy. U-D-E-M-Y. On Udemy, there are paid courses and there are free courses. So you can decide to start with the free courses and then move in to the paid courses. Glory to God. Now, when you come across these pages, what should you do? Comment wisely. You can go to um, a page where someone is sharing such valuable information and go and be commenting slangs. Or just drop comments that have got nothing to do with what the person is talking about. They will block you. 
The block button is one of my favorite buttons online. No time for stupidity here. Are you getting that? So comment wisely, like their content, and you'll begin to see more of such content or waste that person post more of his or her content. Praise the Lord. Then, number four, follow such a person. I see people sending, I have over a thousand uh, friend requests on my Facebook page. I don't even check it all the time. I don't have the time to start checking who I should accept or not. If you want to see anybody's content who is not directly known to you, who when they see your name, they may not be familiar with it and not have any reason to accept your friend request, just click follow. That doesn't need them to approve your following them or not. Once you click follow, you are going to start seeing whatever they put out there. If you are interested in what they share, click follow. Whether it's on Instagram, whether it's on uh, Facebook, whether it's on X, just follow such personalities. And you're going to see more and more and more of what they are putting out. Glory to God. Then, number five for today, bookmark what you are interested in. So many times we've seen things online that are quite interesting and we are interested. But maybe I don't have time right now to see or look into the details of what this person is talking about. Then I tell myself I will come back to it. Then when I'm ready to come back to it, I can't remember the handle. I can't remember the page name. I can't remember the person's name. I don't, you know, your, your, your feed refreshes every few seconds. So if you are not fast enough to bookmark, it just wipes out and you are saying something new, maybe somebody dancing. And that's the list of your problems right now. That's not what you want to see. So when you see content that you're interested in, just click bookmark. If it's on uh, Instagram, you click save. If it's on Facebook, you click save. Then when you are free and you're ready, you just go to your uh, settings, go to your saved items, and you are able to use that information, delve into it, get all of what the person has for you. Glory to God. So I'll give out two platforms for today. There are so many more. I'll be giving them out as we move on. But this is, um, there's one called preply.com. This is mostly for those who want to teach. Preply.com, P-R-E-P-L-Y.com. You can register there, start reading about it. Start, and when you register on a platform and you don't know where to go next, go to a search engine. Go on, just type how to use Preply, how to get customers on Preply, how to accelerate my um, whatever on Preply. There are people who were stuck with, like you at one time who made the efforts to go and put out information that will help others. It's just like when your computer freezes and you are there trying to do everything to unfreeze it. A simple search will show you that somebody somewhere had that same problem at one time and put an information online on how they were able to unfreeze it. Use your search engines. Use your search engines. Use your YouTube. Are you getting that? You see this generation, they are so unlike us. We, some of us are so stuck. We are looking for something and then we are waiting for weeks for somebody who knows about it. Then you talk to a 13-year-old and they pick your phone and say, Mommy, let me get it for you. I remember one day I came across a book and I liked the book. I just went to Amazon bought the book for about $12 and downloaded it. Then I was talking to my daughter about it, and she went to a certain site and got it for free. She downloaded it for free. This is what they were born into. This is what they know. This is what they believe in. Tell them you want them to come and learn how to cook a certain soup. They'll tell you that they'll watch it on YouTube. Only God knows what they will watch. But that's their mindset. So you also need to start thinking like that, they, that there's enough solution for me online. There is enough information. By the time I go through three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, I will find something useful to move me to the next level. Then the second one for today is nativecamp.net. Nativecamp.net. Hallelujah. Native as in real native. N-A-T-I-V-E dot net. So let's start exploring those ones and then next week we'll talk about 
a lot more. God bless you and have a great Easter. Hello. Did you get the last one? Native camp. I was going to camp. Native camp. Dot net. Orientation camp. Uh -huh. Native camp.
He's the Son of God, Jesus, one true God.
Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Just watch. when he went to the cross we went with him when he died we died with him when he was buried we were buried with him when he rose again the Bible says he rose with him unto glory just thank him Oh, 
He's alive again. Oh, the storms be rolled away. He's alive again. He's no longer where he lay. He's alive again. I can hear the angels sing. Let the whole world rejoice. He's alive. He's alive again. He's alive again. All the stories. Christ in me, Christ in me, Christ in me, what a life, oh what a life, Jesus Christ has brought for me, what a price, what a price, he went to the cross to to pay.
Paracotelebos, speak in other tongues, speak in other tongues. The tomb is empty. Man de Creda Bosha. Death could not hold him down. Death could not hold him down. Carabasholobo Talabase Kibredos. La Catala Bradiga Sonde. Le Cora Catele Brandegosa. Le Regeshe de Becadabacata. Ralaba Talarabasata. Calabase de Becadabosa. I'm alive unto God. Oh, man, the Kratos are like a Jelaba. Lift up your hands. You're the God who answers prayer. Oh, you are the God. You are the God who never fails me. You always hear me when I call.
shaken oh katana the bible calls him the strong and the breasted one he's El Shaddai when he went to the cross he paid for everything when he said it was finished he meant it was finished nothing missing nothing broken that's the kind of God we serve the Bible says that they that trust in him are like Mount Zion. They will never be shaken. Lift up your hands and thank him. You will never be shaken. For nothing can move you from the love of the Lord. His grace surrounds you. And his peace is forever. He has loved you with an everlasting love. And with his blood, he paid the tax once and for all for you. And today, the tomb is empty Your name has been purified For the blood of Jesus Speaks of better things Than any blood can Now we see that with him far above in the heavens where we have right in his presence we have joy in his presence for with him all things just work together for our good. When the enemy comes like a floor, he set a standard for us. As we run into his grave, Ibu ngalaba Jesus love we Ibu the strain of a last
nothing that he cannot do. There is nothing he cannot do. Borabashende Gerosa Kerala Bosha. That's the mountain he cannot Lord, we rejoice in you. We rejoice in you, O God. Hallelujah. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for dying for us. You are so holy, O God. You are so faithful. Hallelujah. I give you praise for all you are. I worship you for who you are. Oh, Lord, I give you thanks for all you've done. I bow my 
Lord of life. We worship you, O oh God. Just sit down for a moment. Just thank the Lord. There is nothing he cannot do. Oh, hallelujah. You know, when you praise the beauty of God's holiness, miracles are bound to take place. The Bible says that God inhabits the praises of his people. Whenever God shows up, chains are broken. Sicknesses disappear. Are you hearing me? There's nothing that can stand the name of Jesus. The Bible says that that name every knee bows. And we have been given that name that's above every name. Oh, hallelujah. The Bible says, blessed is the man who comes in that name. Oh, yeah. Lift up your say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I come in the name of Jesus. Jesus. I'm blessed. Blessed in my going in. Blessed in my coming out. Blessed in the city. Blessed in the country. Wherever you go, you are blessed. Hallelujah. We we'll rejoice in this. Paul says, do Peter says, though we have not seen, yet we believe. And our hearts are filled with joy, unspeakable, and full of glory. Lift up your hands and just thank him. I don't know what you're looking for, what you're asking for, but it's done. It's done. It's done. It's done. In that name of Jesus, it's done tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It says, arise and testify. Arise and shine. Your light has come. The glory of God is upon you. Hallelujah. Thank you, choir. God bless you. So happy Easter to you. Glory to God. You know, you're the reason for Easter. There's something called the glory of God. I don't know if you know about it. And the glory of God is not just a word that we use to praise him. When we say, oh, glory be to God. It's not some words that we shout and chant when we feel good in church. Glory! That's not the glory of God. The glory of God is the life of God. It's the effulgence, the showing of who he is. Hallelujah. And that's what God has given to us. That's what he wants us to have. Hallelujah. That's the reason Jesus came. The Bible says he is the glory of the Father. And God knew that the only way that he can bring us to that life is to bring us into Christ. When we become one with him, then the glory who shine through us. In Psalm 60, the prophet saw it. Zion, he said, Arise and shine, for your light is come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Arise and shine. It's time. Tell someone say it's time. You know, in 1 Peter chapter 1, from verse 6 to 8, the Bible says that wherein you greatly rejoice, don't now for a season. Your troubles, trials, problems around you. I know how James said it's a counted or joy when you go through different kinds of temptations, trials. You're fighting different things. It's a counted or joy. So those things are meant to just produce in you the qualities of endurance. Qualities of endurance and the faith to get you through those things. The consistency of the word. The Bible says, for the just shall live by his faith. Why did he say that? He says, faith is the victory that overcomes the world. He knew there was going to be troubles in the world. He says, hey, your faith is that victory. And so he says, hey, you're going to live, you're going to be able to succeed only by your faith. The word of God that you have taken in and made yours. Maybe we should read First Peter chapter 1, verse 6. 
chapter 8. Let me show you something here. The Bible says, Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in what? In heaviness through manifold temptations. You are going through a lot of things, so you're troubled, you're worried, or you have some issues that you're not so happy about. He said it's for a season. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Don't hold on to it. This world season is coming to pass. There's nothing that can stand except the word of God. Nothing remains except the word. He says heaven and earth will pass away. But it's the word that will remain. And we are born of the word. Everything will get out and you will remain. That sickness will go. That trouble will go. That problem will go. That lack will disappear. But you will stand strong. You are here for the glory of God. It's through you the men are going to see that God is alive. He's risen. You are the light of the world. The Bible says that the trial of your faith. Are you seeing that? It is your faith that has been tried. It's not you. What have you believed? Say this trial is too much. The temptation I'm going through is too much. You are not going through anything. It's your faith that's going through it. What the devil is trying to get is you to change your confession. The things you say. What's in your mouth? What are you saying? What have you believed? What are you holding on to? What are you living by? What sustains you? That's what the devil goes out for. He's after that thing that keeps you. If only you can just change your confession. If only you can just say the wrong things. If only you can just believe the wrong things. Then he's empowered. I've told you many times, the devil has no power over you. There's nothing the devil says concerning you or against you that can work. It doesn't matter who said it. It says a costless cost. Are you hearing me? It's only the one that you agree to that can work. So many times the devil tries to, to show you pictures that is not real. The Bible says we should cast down those. They are imaginations. Anything that exalts itself above the knowledge of God that you know, because the Bible says as he is, so are we also. He says we're looking to this perfect law of liberty and we are changed. From what? He says from glory unto glory. That is the very essence of God, the life of God. We are transformed to become like him. For we are created in his image and likeness. The only thing that changed us was when the devil brought the, long, the wrong stories to us and we believed it. Now the Bible says as we look into this word of God, we begin to see ourselves on you. Are you seeing that? And that changes you. It says that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth. Are you seeing how God, he says the trial of your faith is more precious. Money cannot buy your faith. What money cannot do for you, your faith will do it. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? The sickness that money cannot heal, your faith can heal it. The connections that your money or whoever you know cannot get for you, your faith can get it. So the devil is not after you. It's not after your children or anything you have. He's after your faith. There's nothing you have that the devil is after. The only thing is after is that thing that's more expensive, much more uh, valuable than what? Than gold. The Bible says that gold that perishes. Your faith doesn't die, it's alive. For faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The word of God is alive, it's the same today, yesterday, and forever. So the Bible says that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold and that perisheth, though it be tried with fire. Have you gone through fire yet? It says, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise. And what? And honor. And what else? And glory at the showing of Christ in you. The Bible says when Christ who is our life shows up. When you know it's no longer you that lives in this body. 
But it's Christ that lives here. Everything about you responds to that life. Christ in me. Christ in me. Christ in me. Christ in me. The one that never dies. The Bible says, if that same spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead now lives in you, that same spirit. Tell someone to say that same spirit. Aha. Uh -huh. It will revitalize your mortal body. Give it new life. Bring it back to a new living. New graces. Nothing dies around that life. The Bible calls it the spirit of life in Christ. Nothing dies around you. Not even the cells in your body. Nothing dies around you. You're a life giver. Oh, hallelujah. That same spirit. That same spirit. I told you Easter is all because of you. You rose with Christ. And the Bible says, on to glory. On to glory. Ah. The Bible says, whom having not seen. Are you seeing that? Verse number eight. This Jesus, though you have not seen him, ye love him. In whom though now you see him not, ye what? Believing, ye rejoice with what? Joy unspeakable and full of glory. I know. My rejoicing is in Christ. I know. I know. To know means that you have come to the place of truth. And I told you that truth is the only thing that can stand against what? Facts. It doesn't matter the facts that you have with you. The truth will cancel it. They might have tested something in your body. And they showed you the fact is that you have cells that are dying. The fact is that you have cancer. The fact is that you have HIV. The fact is that you have so and so in your body. But the truth is about the stripes that were laid on Jesus. There was something that canceled the facts. The Bible says that the handwriting that was against you. The things that they wrote, the doctors wrote it. The economy wrote it. The things that were against you. That the blood of Jesus Christ made mess of it. Now those demons are confused. They don't even know what they are reading anymore. The blood that Jesus shed for us. Way back at Calvary. Oh, that blood that gives us strength from day on the day. From day to day, it will never lose its power. It will never lose its power. It will never lose its power. Oh, hallelujah. So what happens? We're receiving the end of our faith, even the salvation of our souls. If your soul is not saved, your body cannot be saved. You're first healed in your spirit before you're healed in your body. The salvation of your soul. That's what faith brings to us. That was something Job found out in the Old Testament. The people didn't understand him. And he said to them, he said, though this is my body, is rotting away. It's dying every day. But I know my Redeemer liveth. The one who is inside of me is alive. <laughs> and if that same spirit dwells in this body, it will revitalize this body. Do you know Jesus is alive? How real is this living Jesus to you? Do you have the life in you? The Bible says he that has the son of God has his life. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. Paul was writing to the Galatian church, and he said, I'm crucified with Christ. Today, I want you to go through that experience where you're seated. If you know what it means, joined with him. Joined with Christ. One and the same. Like Paul, can you boldly say, I'm crucified with Christ. I'm nailed with him. Everything he went through, I went with him. He took my place that I might take his own. Says, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, oh, hallelujah. Nevertheless, I live. I died with him. When he died, I died. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I. There's a new occupant in this body. One the devil cannot toy with. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? The same house, but a new occupant. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. The one who is here right now is called Christ. The anointed one and his anointing is at work in my life. Oh, Barari, that's it. The Bible says, and this anointing breaks every yoke. Breaks every yoke. Nothing has the ability to hold you down. It says, a life which I live now, in this flesh. Are you seeing that? The life that I live in this flesh. There's a life of the spirit and there's a life of the flesh. It says, the life that I live in this flesh right now. I live by the faith. By the faith, by the words, by the spirit of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Oh, bandigrada bandarama. Because of this, the Bible says, I, don't frustrate, I will not frustrate the spirit of God. I'm not struggling with him who is, alive, who is, who is going to, hey, but, but, but when my body is finished, what the doctor said, hey, he says, hey, stop it. Say, I do not frustrate the grace of God. Because I live by his grace now. He's the one living here. I'm surviving by him. I'm, I'm alive by him. His life is what is in me. Say, I don't frustrate that life. He shouldn't be going this way. I'm going this way. No. He says, I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness comes by the law, by my works, by the things that I know, then Christ died in vain. Can I have this in the message translation? Give it, if you have the Passion Translation, give it to me first from verse number 20. Tell somebody, I have the divine life of God in me. The indestructible life of God is in me. Aha. Uh -huh. The Bible says, Christ's life showed me how. Start from verse 20, uh, 19. So they will understand it very well. Bible says, what actually took place is this. I tried keeping rules and walking my head off to please God. And it didn't work. It didn't work. Did you see that? It didn't work. So it's not by my works of righteousness, by keeping some laws. I said, no. So I tried it. It didn't work. So I quit being what? A lawman. So that I could what? Be God's man. Which is better? Tap someone say, I'm God's man. Yes, yes. I say, yes, so am I also. I'm God's man. I'm his representative. He's in me. Ah. He says, Christ's life showed me how and enabled me to do it. I identified myself completely with what? With Christ. He says, no longer I that lives here. It's Christ that lives here. So he's showing you how it happens. He said, you identify fully with what? With Christ. No part of you is you. Everything is Christ. In 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Paul writing to the Corinthian church said to them, he said, hey, 
if any man be in Christ, he is a new species of being. One that never existed before. He said, the old is gone. The new has come. He said, and this new one that is here right now, everything about this one is of Christ. There's no spare part that is used to be my own. Every part belongs to Christ. So everything about me responds to him. My health, my life, my body, my veins, my, my tissues, everything about me responds to Christ. The Christ life. That is my real life. That is my real life. He says, when Christ, who is your real life, shows up, say so you will show up with him. It's there. Oh, man, they cross to some man. So he says, hey, my ego is no longer what? Central. That's not what I'm concentrating on. Who I am, what I am, what I used to be, what I can do, what people think about me. No. He said, it is no longer important that I appear what? Righteous before you. Or have your good opinion. And I'm no longer what? Driven to impress God. Christ lives in me. Ah. Christ lives in me. Yes, I'm his tabernacle. Christ lives in me. The life you see me living is not mine. So nobody can collect it from me. It is not my life. I cannot give it to you. It belongs to God. My life is God's property. If God be for you, who can be against you? Oh, hallelujah. Say, but it is lived by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Verse 21. I am not going to back on that. I'm not going to what? Go back on that. I'm not going to frustrate the Holy Spirit. I won't frustrate him. I won't go back on it. I will live it. I will live this life to the full. I'm alive. I'm alive. Christ lives in me. Hallelujah. So what are you going to do? The Bible says to arise and shine. Are you hearing me? Arise and what? And shine. I've heard the word depression many times being used by people. I've never been there. Nothing can depress me. No when I have Jesus in me. So I was going through depression. In fact, I didn't. What is really this? Who, who understands? Who has gone through depression? Let me know. I want a definition, a good definition of depression. <laughs> because it's better for those who, have, who, have, who think they have experienced. Some of you. You did not even experience. You don't even know what you experienced. You just think it's depression. You had one big language, depression. So I'm using it in there. So I want to know who who knows what depression means. Okay. You don't have any understanding of the word of God. That they are spiritualizing this thing. A state of frustration. Okay. We are getting there. Hopelessness. Okay. Despair. No need to leave. You don't, you don't think what less you sad. Who else? Now we are, not, we are finding the people out. Some of you are English people. Don't worry. I understand you know English very well. It's not you. Who else? Depression. Depression is a place you actually find yourself. I hope you know that. So you are the one that walks into that place called depression. You, you live there. It's like I came into this place of sadness, of hopelessness. I don't think I, there's, no, there's no need to, to continue to work, to continue to struggle. I, I've lost everything that has to do with the joy of living. You know when the Bible says the joy of the Lord is our strength, that's what it's talking about. Strength is taken out of you. The need to want to live, to want to continue is taken out. 
That's why people who are in depression are dangerous people. They can, they can commit suicide at any time. They can. They are prone to allowing the devil manipulate them because they've lost control of who they are. They're no longer in charge. So anything the devil says to them then, and they, they want to leave it. I want to show you something. Isaiah chapter 60. I want it in the Amplified Translation. Put it up. Don't worry, I'm closing now. Today is Easter, so that's why we are Easterizing. Hallelujah. It's called Easterizing. Okay. Can we put it up? Aha. Uh -huh. You know, the Bible says the just shall live by his faith. Faith is the victory that overcomes the world. The reason why people are in depression is because the world has overcome them. Are you seeing that? No faith anymore. There's nothing that they have that's telling them tomorrow can become better. So they give up. But we are not like that. The word of God is alive in us. The Bible says it is living and active. Sharper than any two-edged sword. There's nothing the word of God cannot diagnose. Even if the doctors cannot find it, the word will find it. Even if the name has not been discovered, you have a name that's above every name. The Bible says that that name, every knee will bow. And every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? The greater one lives inside of you. Greater is he that's in you. Greater is he that's in you. Greater is he that's in you. So he says, arise from what? You didn't know it was in the Bible. Now you see it. It says, arise from the depression and what? Prostration in which circumstances have kept you. Get out. Stop having pity parties. Nobody cares about me. Nobody wants to help me. The Bible says you've been mightily helped of God. Which one are you looking for again? All the help you need is in Christ. You're not making use of what you have. Arise is amplified. The amplified translation. It says arise from what? The depression and prostration in which this thing has, has leveled you. You've fallen flat on your face. Circumstances of life have kept you. Rise. Does I say rise? rise? Yes. When Jesus rose up from the dead, the Bible says what? We rose with him. Arise. Don't remain in the grave. The place of nothingness. That's what Jesus took you out of. Bible says he went to that grave and he led captivity. What? Captain, nothing holds you down. Nothing can stop you. Nothing can work against you successfully. He didn't just open the doors and say, come out. He came out with you. And the Bible says we are seated with him in glory. Far above. Far above. Where you are is too far for the devil. I've told you many times. The Bible says you are hid in Christ in God. Far, far inside. Before they get to you, they will get to God, get to Christ. The Bible says Christ is the apple of God's eye. You cannot get there. I'm just afraid who is going to... I don't know. This, 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 where you are, nothing can get there. It's only the life of Christ that you enjoy. In him you live. In him you move. In him you have your existence. I'm alive! I'm alive unto God. Stand up on your feet. So it says rise to a new life. Did you see that? 
Leave it there for them to see. Say, rise to a new life. The Bible says we have newness in Christ. Arise to this new life. Arise to this new life. Shine. Say, I'm shining. Shine. Be radiant with the glory of the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. For your light has come. And the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. I'm not going to lay hands on anybody today. But I see the glory all around you. Bible says now it is your show. You're the one to stand up, arise and shine. Arise, shine. Arise, shine. As you stand up, you begin to shine. You radiate the glory of God. You show forth his excellences. Everywhere you are found, you are shining. You are shining. That's why Jesus says you are the light of the world. A city set upon a hill cannot be hid. You cannot hide what God put inside of you. The life of God is at work in you. I refuse to die. I refuse to be sick. I refuse to go under. I refuse to be poor. I refuse to be sad. I refuse to be depressed. I have life in me. I'm alive. 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 My business is alive. My home is alive. My my family is alive. My marriage is alive. My relationship is alive. It's full of God. Everything about me. My bank accounts are alive. Man, they, my investments are alive. Everything I lay my hands to do, the Bible says, prospers. It prospers. It's from glory to glory. God directs my footsteps. Let me tell you something you don't know about you. You know, many people have stayed in a place of what we call quasi in law, they say quasi. Is that how you both call it? Quasi depression, small one, without knowing it. Because some things didn't work the way you thought it was going to be. You were calculating with your mind. And so you took some steps and it looked like it didn't work. And, and so you, you didn't move beyond there. You are there fighting that thing. When the real thing is in front, you must understand that you're living by the word. If you don't know what and how to behave, you behave the word. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Your behavior is the word. Your character is God's word. You live by the word. If you don't know what to do, the Bible says, search the scriptures. Timothy wrote it to us. He says, study to show yourself approved. A workman that needs not to be ashamed. Rightly divine in the word of truth. I told you the word is truth. The facts don't matter. The fact right now is that it looks as though you lost more. You didn't lose nothing. He said all things work together for your good. Including that matter. There's a good in that thing. It is working together for your good. Though the devil intended it for evil, but God is moving you beyond it. Because of that, he opened a door that you wouldn't have passed through. He says, keep calm. He said, the only reason you're going through this is so that you can be patient enough to understand that I'm God. Nothing moves you. I'm able to keep you. All things means everything with the exception of nothing. Everything works together for your good. Nothing works against you successfully. You thought you lost, but you just won a jackpot. Let me tell you, whatever your senses and this world can give to you would not last. 
but what you, you walked out by faith. You took the word of God and walked it out and believed him and walked on. The Bible says it's eternal. Nothing can take it away from you. Lift up those hands and just worship him. Thank you. See what, see what hope we have in Christ. The Bible says this hope maketh not ashamed. Because we now judge. We judge according to what Christ did. We thus judge. We thus, if one died for all, then all died. So he, if he's alive today, we are all alive. If he's ruling, we are ruling with him. That's the life you have. So every sickness has been vanished from your body. From your mind. I told you what is, what is being fought is your mind. Your mind is full of health. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Your thought is full of health. You speak health. You live health. You say it. And your body responds to that. There's no poverty in your house, in your home, in your account, in your life. What is being attacked is what you believe. Your mind, what the word of God says. Do you believe it? He supplies all your needs. He didn't say according to your job or how the contracts you've gotten or how the economy is going. Please understand God. Say that according to his riches in glory. That same glory he has given to you. You live there. Are you hearing me? Where you are, there's no lack. He supplies it according to that life. As long as I'm living that life, hey, Doors are open. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? I hear by the Spirit of God, doors are open. 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 And no man can shut them. Doors are open continually, continually. So as you walk to the doors, they will burst for us. They will burst for us. So just keep moving. Keep moving. Keep walking. By faith, and the doors will open before you. The doors were open before. I pray for every one of you today. By the power of God's Spirit. The anointing of the Holy Ghost as in this house. That grace be increased. That your faith will respond to the word continually. And the fruit and the evidence of God's glory will be seen in you. Everyday testimonies. Your mouth will not cease to testify of the goodness of our God. For you have been protected of him. For his hand is upon you, says the Spirit of God. He says, fear not. Fear not, but be full of faith. Know you not that I am with you. Say, wheresoever you go, say, I'm with you. Wherever. Say, open your eyes and see. See the nations bow before you. See the wealth of the nations come into you. For I am God. And I change not. Say, you know, during the present term, the dear man of God, Pastor Benny, he said something that I want us to pay attention to so you know where you are right now. He said, The coming of Christ is so close, who knows? It could be this year. It could be next year, it could be another five years, it could be ten years, but it's very close. He said, just like the children of Israel, when it was time to leave the land of Egypt, God empowered them, brought wealth to them. I told you before, we are not escaping from this world. Are you hearing me? You're not going to get out of here in poverty. Or pain or anything. 
So we're escaping. No. There was no sick one amongst them. There was no one dying. It was, it was, it was Egyptians that died. The word of God was at work in them. Sustaining them. Keeping them. The blood was speaking for them. The Bible says that the door post, the blood was there. And the dead angels walked past them. There's nothing that can destroy you in this season. The Bible says this is the church that will see Jesus. But he told them, he said, before you leave, say, get from those people. The gold, the silvers, the precious, everything precious, get it from them. And that's what you're going to be doing in this season. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Is the in gathering. The in gathering. This is the time the Bible says the wealth of the Gentiles will be transferred. We will rock this world and leave them. One word we will say, Jesus, come. We are good to go. We would have preached this gospel so much that nobody would say I did not hear. I will do it in glory. Are you ready? Lift up your hands and say, Lord, I'm ready. Lord, I'm, ready. Yes, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. And so it is. The world comes to you now. The word of the God functions in you today. From this day forward, you begin to do uncommon things in your life, in your business, in ministry. Everything about you will be big. It will be sounding in the ears of men as wonders. You will shine as a light in the name of Jesus Christ. Glory! Happy Easter to you. God bless you. Sit down. What a life you've got. God must love you so much. Hallelujah. Wow. I like that scripture. I like reading many times in Psalm 1, the message translations. Say how God must love you. Put it for them. Let them see. Should go home with that. Psalm 1, verse 1. Message translation. We've closed. We just took extra time. Because we needed to beat the devil very well. It was not like we drew. There's no draw, there's no draw in this game. We, 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 we have to win. Put it there. Let them see. Say how God must like you. Put it up here. Psalm 1 1. When you are ready, let me know. Who here is not born again? Is it possible? You've not given your heart to Jesus. Anybody like that? You've been going to church. I'm not talking about religion. I told you on Wednesday. I said, What we've got is a relationship, it's not a religion. Is that okay? And so, in case you've had a religion, let's change it for a relationship today. It's a different thing. The two of them not be the same. Christ in you. Is there anybody like that? I need Jesus here. I need to be born again. Stand up and come. Come. Just stand up and come. You need Jesus. Come. God bless you. What a life. He will save. Come, come. I need Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come. Come. There's still room at the master's feet. Wherever you are, you are the reason Jesus died. He wants to give you a new life. He, he will save you. Come. He will save Come, wherever you are, come. Whether you're of the gallery, come. Jesus calls. Come to Jesus. Come. Jesus 
cause. What an Easter for you. Christ risen in your life. Jesus did on the cross he did it for me he died for me that I might have life and today I confess with my mouth that you are my Lord my master and my savior I confess with my mouth that I have life in Christ Jesus today I've exchanged my life for that of Christ I'm born again thank you Lord for saving me. I'm one with you. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for coming into my heart and taking charge of my life. From today, my body is your temple. Use me for your glory, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Let me pray for you. Mighty God, I thank you for these ones that have given their heart to you. Your word says you will not cast them out, but give them everlasting life. They have received that life today. And it's from grace to grace and from glory to glory. As they leave this place, oh God, your light shines on them. They will not return back to perdition. But your spirit in them will keep them, oh God. I'll cause them to grow, oh God, and to become giants in your kingdom. The evil one ceases to exert against these ones from today. The hand of God of your spirit is upon them. And the hands of the evil one is taken away from them. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, mighty God. Oh, you said that, that you have given to us. You will, not take, you will keep, oh God, by your spirit. Even so, these ones are kept by you. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Congratulations for giving your heart to Jesus. Put your hands together for them. How amazing is your Easter. Christ was risen in you. That's so beautiful. You are the joy of heaven today. You are proof that Jesus didn't die in vain. Are you hearing me? He died for a reason. If just for you. Do you know that if you were the only one on earth, when Jesus came, he still would have died? It's just that you, have, you would have been the one to crucify him. Because you are the only one here there. So you would be the one to kill him. But he still would have died. Are you seeing that? just for you. Congratulations. Hallelujah. I want to give you a special gift for giving your heart to Jesus today. The Bible says, because of what you did, that the angels are already having a party in heaven. God is glad you're back home. And so, we want to give you um, the story of your life. Is that okay? So when you read that story, you'll find out who you really are in God. So we're giving you a new study Bible. Is that okay? A beautiful one that you can study and show yourself approved, a workman, and needs not to be ashamed. From all of us, this is a gift from us. A new Bible for a new life. Congratulations. And for you too. A new Bible for a new life. And for you. A new Bible for a new life. 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 And a new Bible for a new life. And you too, a new Bible for a new life. God bless you. You just follow the ushers. And when you get there, tell them you want to enroll in foundation school. Is that okay? 
two minutes, you still come back to your seat. Just follow them. Two minutes. Follow the ushers. You still come back. Keep clapping for them. Okay. I have two things I want to do before I go back to my seat. Um, now we've had um, quite some projects going on in church. Um, the building of church too has been going on. I would not really trouble you for those things. A lot, a lot of money has been going into all of that. And uh, we're doing it gradually. Uh, we're also trying to make sure we fix the road before the rain starts. So you can drive to church very well. You can see we already started uh, putting some uh, a mixture of tar there with uh, gravel so that we can level it. And that's been between myself and Pastor Loretta. We've been doing that. Um, and um, I, didn't, I didn't say you should clap. I just wanted you to know. So we brought in about maybe six or seven trees. And they said um, when the contractors came that were supposed to come and, you know, do the work and level it and roll it, they said they need two more of the big um, um, whatever that we bought so we, complete, so we can have enough so the road can be good enough. And so uh, we were on that. I told them, okay, just hold on, I'll do it. I didn't want to bring that to you, but so many other things have come up. There are things we need to fix around. And we've been having, for the past two weeks, we've been having some thefts if that's the word they use in church too, you know. They've been breaking in, jumped through the fence. They came in the other week, stole some fans. You know, these hits, they think it's the house of God, they will come and <laughs> cool down. They took some fans, it wasn't a problem. So we bought some new ACs. Myself, as Lord, I bought one. Um, our dear governor here bought one for us, added to what was there. And then last week, I had they came back during the week. They jumped in again and um, carried away with one or two things. And they also went and I don't know, the, there's a copper pipe that they use to connect the, the ACs to the outdoor, those big copper. Now they went there and cut them. I don't want to say what will happen to them. It's not my mouth. Pastor Rita has spoken. What will happen to whoever came to the house of God to do that is dangerous. You don't try it. When you some people mad walking on the street, you'll be wondering what is their problem. What happened to them? So I leave that for them. And so we need to beef up our security a little more. Uh, apart from that, we also needed to raise the fence higher because I've, they felt it was maybe not high enough, so it was easy for them to scale through. Uh, between Friday and today, uh, we spent close to maybe... Two, two point something million, just buying blocks, cement, you know, everything now is very high. Cement blocks, you know, so they started the work already, raising the fence, you know. I was this church get money. I've told you many times. The money that comes from this church, I don't see it, I don't know where it goes to, I don't want to know. I'm not the pastor that has been paid to pastor you. I spend my money here the same way you spend. That's the kind of pastor I am. And that's why I decided to be, because I want God to bless me personally. Is that okay? And that's why most of the things we do, we do it. I, I remember we left one of our churches, and later I had one of the churches we pastored. And I had some brethren saying that we're not nice, that we're not good pastors. Because that we, we, we knew what was prospering us. So we will not call them to join us to do it. We'll be doing it by ourselves. So we're getting rich. They were not getting rich. We'll just be doing the things by ourselves. So, <laughs> so the truth about the house of God is that every opportunity that we have to give is for us to be increased. I was just given and shall be given back to you. So God creates opportunities from time to time for you to be able to give and increase yourself. Is that okay? It says as long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest will not cease. So this week we want to get the remaining, um, what's it called? Uh, what they need, the materials they need for the road, and also pay the machines that will come and work and the contractors so they can finish that road. It's not much money. And we need to finish the work this way. The fence, uh, we're putting uh, security, whatever, and we are getting more security because they came in the afternoon. They knew the night we had, we had put people there to guard the place in the night. So they come in in the afternoon. And because in the afternoon, most of the time, they're guarding this way, that side is left. 
the gates are so they jump through the fence and do what they need to do. So we need to also have um, guards working there during the day. So I can't just employ just one person. So all of that we need to do this week. And so I thought that everybody should be part of this. Is that okay? And um, I just need maybe 10 people that can give me 200,000, 10 people who can give me um, 100,000, and maybe 20 people who can give me uh, 50,000, and it will be good. I'm sure everything will be done. We are actually planning to see that. Thank you very much. God bless you. Prompt to do, just stand up. Let me be seeing you. Prompt to do it, give us. <laughs> God bless you. Um, we are also planning to, because the rains are coming, we are planning to make the entrance into church two to be from church one. So we're going to have, when you come in, there'll be um, a driveway and we're opening up the fence. They drive from here so they don't have to go through the, the road and all the, the problems there. We are fixing the road down to the front here. So when they drive here, we've tried for them. We did the bridge, we did all the, we spent, when we did this bridge, we spent over 60 something million then. You know, so it's not the government, it's us. So we'll keep doing. Is that okay? Like I said, we are not being paid. I'm not being paid. I'm giving just like you're giving. We've been doing a lot. Every month we spend millions here. Diesel now cost us about um, 1.7 million every two weeks to buy diesel for this place. Do I come to meet you? The church doesn't provide for that. Just a few of us decide, okay, I want to do it. You know. So when you come and this is is not blowing, why now? It's diesel, diesel. <laughs> so that's so in, in a month we spend close to three million, if not more, on diesel. You know, every at least every three weeks we must buy diesel. When we have more services, two weeks we have to buy. One point seven million. So you can see the gospel is free, but it's not cheap. Is that okay? And you are too you are too royal for us to put you under heat and all those. No. We are well able. Is that okay? So we're going to do that. So if, please, if you want to give, I don't want 20,000, just this set of people. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, if you want an account number, do we have an account number for that? It says, Sister Sodia there. I knew they were doing something about the accounts recently. I don't know if they fixed that. And so the bank had an upgrade. But, but I think there's a POS or something. So if you need to. Um, but you can write what you want to give down. Can I, uh, Sister Sonia, can you get here? There's an account. Okay, they'll display it for you. They say there's an account for those who want to. But if you give, we also want to get your name and what you give. Is that okay? We need it so we can pray for you and so we can have it in record that you gave for this. It's part of your partnership. Is that okay? And so we want to say it. So please, that's all we need to do. So if you need um, a sheet of paper, the ushers have something you can write and just be part of what we're doing. Praise the Lord. Okay, I know some of you don't like money matters. But well, we enjoy it. Okay, now, today is the 31st of this month. So before I go back to my seat, how many of people you had your birthday this month? You are part of those that gather to kill Jesus. Let me see your hand. <laughs> okay, can you just stand up and come, come forward? Your birthday was this month. Come, come. Your birthday is today. You are the culprit. You rose up with Christ. Come. Keep coming. Just come. Please, can we sing for them? Just a day, just another year. But in our hearts, you are the wow. best. We're here to love So everyone are doing photo shoots. Then they call us. Celebrate your day. smile on you may happiness always come your way we are love we're gonna celebrate your day
just for you. Happy birthday, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday. Was if they are doing like this, they're just doing this. The ground should open. When was your birthday? 26th. And you ate the chicken alone. Stretch forth your hands and just bless them. These are heaven's best. For the glory of God will radiate through them even much more in this new year of their lives. We show forth the glory of our God. The excellencies of his kingdom. And the peace of God will surround them. And they're going out and they're coming. Now this year will mark a milestone in their lives. As we prophesy to them today. That the changes will be evident to every man. That indeed the hand of God is upon them. That the Lord has been for them. Lord, we thank you for your children. Lord, we celebrate with them today, O oh God. Another year added, O oh God. It's not just another year, it's another year of grace. Another year of abundance, of your faithfulness towards them. Of your peace. That peace that passes all human understanding. The peace of prosperity. Lord, I thank you. I thank you, O oh God, because heaven is blessed because of them. Because of these ones, your kingdom moves forward. The good of the land comes to them. They are protected. And as long as you tarry, O oh God, these ones will serve you in good health, in abundance, and in joy. Lord, I thank you for them. All the desire of God comes to them in this year. Good measures pressed down shaking together and running over. Lord, I thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Congratulations to all of you. And happy birthday to you. God bless you all. See, I'm giving all of you a big hug. Yes. Happy birthday to him too. God bless you. Okay. Bring out your offerings and your tithes. Let us close. It's been a service. Choir, please give us a song. So you can drop I've taken this plate to your account They did, okay Then you can drop your name In the offering bag Just write your name, the amount you gave And Let us know what it's for And they'll take the record
seeds that we have brought to you this morning. Thank you, Lord God, for the blessings that comes with it. Lord, according to your word, we declare that our harvest is a multiplied seed pressed down, shaken together, running over in the name of Jesus Christ. 
the fruits of our righteousness is multiplied. Therefore, Lord God, this week, we walk in abundance in the name of Jesus. That which you have given is sanctified by your spirit. We declare that it is sufficient for the work of ministry in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. He's alive.